ما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم وكيف تكفرون وأنتم تتلى عليكم آيات الله وفيكم رسوله ومن يعتصم بالله فقد هدي إلى صراط مستقيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون واعتصموا بحبل الله جميعا ولا تفرقوا واذكروا نعمة الله عليكم إذ كنتم أعداء فألف بين قلوبكم فأصبحتم, فأصبحتم بنعمته إخوانا وكنتم على شفا حفرة من النار فأنقذكم منها كذلك يبين الله لكم آياته لعلكم تهتدون صدق الله العظيم وبلغنا رسوله النبي الكريم ونحن على ذلك من الشاهدين والشاكرين والحمد لله رب العالمين سورة آل عمران uh, We'll start from Ayah 101 today uh, In the background is that two groups among the Ansar had a fight developed between them and they were incited to fight against each other by the Jewish people and then the Prophet calm, calmed them down and told them that they should not do this especially after they have become Muslims and when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given them the blessing of Iman and made them brothers now they should uh, not do it and if they follow the a group from Ahl Kitab the people of the book they will turn them again back to their state of kufr and now the next ayah that we are going to recite today is وَكَيْفَ تَكْفُرُونَ How could you disbelieve? وَأَنْتُمْ تُطْلَى عَلَيْكُمْ آيَاتُ اللَّهِ While you are the ones to whom the verses of Allah are recited وَفِيكُمْ رَسُولُهُ And you are the ones among, amidst whom present is the messenger of Allah The messenger of Allah His messenger وَمَنْ يَعْتَصِمْ بِاللَّهِ فَقَدْ هُدِيَ إِلَىٰ صِرَاطٍ مُسْتَقِيمٍ Whoever holds on to Allah firmly is surely led to the straight path. So here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is addressing the Sahaba and telling them that how could you ever be the ones who believe when you are the ones upon whom the ayat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the verses of the Qur'an are being recited upon directly and among you is present the messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you are the foremost, the highest, the first of the believers and the most direct in contact with the Prophet ﷺ and the most direct recipients of the recitation of the ayat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Quran, which is the purpose of the sending of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So the Rasul is within you, ayat are being recited upon you of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How could you be the ones who turn back and, and, and become disbelievers. وَمَنْ يَعْتَصِمْ بِاللَّهِ فَقَدْ هُدِيَ إِلَىٰ صِرَاطٍ مُسْتَقِيمٍ Whoever holds on to Allah, اعتصام, or here يَعْتَصِمْ بِاللَّهِ To hold on, to stick firmly. Zahid Mufassirin have written that to hold on to something is number one. Let's do it in perspective. اعتصام بِاللَّهِ is number one, to have a firm belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Number one, knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, firm belief of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Second, in terms of actions, doing only what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands. Doing all that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands and only that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands. So, number one, correction of belief. Number two, correction of a'mal or deeds. And number three is only that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said. So, leaving everything else, leaving all the ways of those who do not believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So these three are the constituents of Itisam Billah or holding on to Allah. Having firm belief and knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, doing what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has asked us to do and not doing what others are doing. If you do that or whoever does it, فَقَدْ هُدِيَ إِلَىٰ صِرَاطِ مُسْتَقِيمٍ They are the ones who have been led to the straight path. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the next two ayat is telling the mu'mineen a detail of this etasam billah which is holding on to Allah and the two principles among which Muslims can forever stay united. Number one and notice the scheme. 
The first is on a personal level. Ya yuhal ladina amanu taqullaha haqqa tuqati. First thing is taqwa. O you who believe, it taqullaha haqqa tuqati. Have taqwa of Allah as is the right of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be had taqwa of. Or fear Allah as is the right of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be feared. Or, or uh, fear Allah as he should be feared. وَلَا تَمُوتُنَّ إِلَّا وَأَنْتُمْ مُسْلِمُونَ And let not yourselves die except as Muslims. So what is the explanation of this ayah? Number one, we have to understand what is taqwa. Taqwa, the literal meaning of taqwa is to refrain or abstain from something. Generally, Hazrat Mufassirin translated as fear, but they are all the same. What the essential concept is that you abstain from disobedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala out of fear and respect of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So sometimes they translate it as fear, sometimes they, uh, they translate it as abstaining from something, but it is all the same. And taqwa haqqa tuqati, as is the right of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be feared, as is the right of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be, to, be, uh, to be feared or to be uh, not disobeyed, to stay away from the disobedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to abstain from disobedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Hazrat Ulama Kiram, except actually it is in the hadith, that the Prophet ﷺ, it is driven from the hadith that there's three levels of taqwa. One is abstaining from kufr and shirk, not associating any partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and not uh, being in a state of disbelief to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is the essential and the most basic, the first level of taqwa. In that manner, every single person who has said La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah has, has some level of taqwa. But that is the lowest and the most basic level of taqwa. The taqwa of the common people is that they not only believe but also stay away from the displeasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, things that displease Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The highest level of taqwa is that is a taqwa of the anbiya, the prophets and the special people of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the friends of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that is that they remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and in such a way that they never Forget Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, ittaqullah haqqa tuqati, the right of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that one is so conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that they never forget Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It, it is a hadith that what is taqwa? Taqwa is that you obey Allah in a way that you never disobey Him. You remember Allah in a way that you never forget Him. And you thank Allah in a way that you never are unthankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the explanation of taqwa. Anyway, and the, the, the words here that wala tamutunna illa wa antum muslimun do not die except as Muslims. This basically means that a question may come to our minds that why is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala telling us to not die except as Muslims while we have no control over um, when our death approaches or in what state our death comes. But in reality, we do have control over our death or the, the time, the state in which we die. The Prophet ﷺ has said that you will die in a way that you live. So if you are steadfast on Iman, if you are true in your Iman, and if you have, if you have a willingness, a, 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 a serious effort to stay alive as Muslims, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will also give you death as Muslims. So this is the way you control your death and the, and the, the state in which you get death. That you stay steadfast on Iman. Then you get death. And the words of the hadith that the way you die, that is the state in which you will be raised up or you know presented before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of Hashim. So the way you live, that is the way you die. The way you die, that is the way you are presented before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So in reality, we have control. We do have a very a good control over, over how we meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When confusion that is asked, uh, that is written in the Fasi, is there some hadith say that a person is going in the direction of Jannah and is very close to Jannah and then they utter or do something, they say or do something that pulls them a, a huge distance away from Jannah and throws them into hellfire. And similarly, there is people who are doing everything to head into Jahannam and they are, very, they are very close to the hellfire and then they do or say something that they consider light but it is very heavy in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they are pulled away from Jahannam and 
Jannah is decided for them. So Hazrat Muhaddisin with all of these hadiths, about all of these hadiths, it is a consensus of Muhaddisin is that this refers to those people who are doing good deeds but do not do them sincerely. So if they do not have sincerity of intention to begin with, they are in the risk that at some point they will be uh, they, will, they, will, they will keep on doing good deeds and they will be as if very near to Jannah but because of a lack of sincerity of intention they might, they might lose it all they might actually flip and turn and go in the direction of Jahannam and vice versa same, same, same is the case of other people that may be doing haram things and things that are displeasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala maybe because of a pressure of the environment but deep down in their heart they have true love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They want to be good Muslims. So it is hope from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at some point they will, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will turn them around and they will start going in the direction of Jannah. All of us should make a conscious effort of becoming the people of Jannah and staying away from going on the track of Jahannam. Inshallah, the meaning of these, the ma'arif, these ayat and the next uh, word is Hablillah why how can muslims unite uh, keep on going inshallah we'll do those next monday inshallah the same ayat we'll do next monday as well inshallah alhamdulillah rabbil alamin salatu wassalamu ala sayyidil mursalin rabbana zalamna anfusana wa lam tawfir lana wa tarhamna wa nakunna minal khasirin rabbi ighfir wa rahim wa anta khayrul rahimin la ilaha illa allah al halim al karim subhanallahi rabbil arsh al azim walhamdulillahi rabbil alamin nas'aluka mujibati rahmatik wa azabika maghfiratik wa ghanimata min kulli bid والسلامة من كل اسم لا تدع لنا ذنبا إلا غفرته ولا هما إلا فرجته ولا حاجة هي لك رضا إلا قضيتها يا رب العالمين يا رحم الراحمين صلى الله تعالى على خير خلقه سيدنا ونانا محمد وعلى 